This week, China warned South Korea of its close relations with the United States and deepening ties with Japan, stating that it threatens the relationship between China and South Korea by bringing external interference into the region. The Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi stated to South Korean Foreign Minister Cho Tai Yui during talks in Beijing that South Korea has added challenge to their bilateral relations that China did not want. China is falling back to its standard tactic that alliances that add a foreign element that adversely impacts China in Asia and the Western Pacific are unnecessarily escalatory and need to be discouraged. Also, China and Russia announced that Russian President Vladimir Putin was going to visit Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing this week for a two-day summit to reinforce their no-limits friendship. This is a demonstration of China's no-limits hypocrisy when it comes to alliances as the two leaders are expected to discuss mutual assistance largely caused by the ongoing Ukraine war. The war in Ukraine has changed the dynamics of the relationship between the two countries. The relationship between the two countries has been close even before the war, but now the war and the economic sanctions against Russia for invading Ukraine has made the relationship a matter of necessity for the Russian leader. China was against the war in Ukraine from the beginning and has been credited of pressuring Russia to tone down its nuclear weapons threats against Ukraine and the West. Despite this, China has been public supporter of Russia and has been a vocal critic of the sanctions against Russia. China, though against the Russian sanctions, has been publicly stating that it abides by the rules of them. It has ruled out any weapon and ammunition sales to Russia that could be used against Ukraine. It does purchase Russian oil at a discount, but does so because of the loopholes in the Western sanction regime that does not want Russian oil removed from the world market and cause a price shock. This Chinese claim of compliance is not taken seriously as it is believed by both the United States and the European Union that China is providing critical assistance to Russia in its war. China is not suspected of selling military equipment to Russia, but of selling to Russia dual-use items, which are items that can be used for both military and civilian applications. These items include nitrocellulose used as a propellant and has played a role in Russia being able to greatly increase its production of artillery shells. Russia received 90% microelectronics from China in 2023 that was able to be used for military vehicle, aircraft, and drone production. China is also selling optics to Russia that is being added to its military vehicles. More importantly, China is providing the factory machine tools necessary for Russia to move to a war economy, despite all the sanctions against it. China also uses third countries in Central Asia to trade sanctioned items and these countries who turn around and sell the items to Russia. This can be done mainly due to Russia having common borders with these Central Asian countries and can move Chinese finished goods across the border without any fear of Western sanction monitoring. The US and European Union are so concerned about these dual use sales that US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen made separate trips to discuss sanction violation concerns with Xi Jinping. French President Emmanuel Macron discussed the concerns with Xi when he visited France last week on a state visit, and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz visited Xi in Beijing last month to discuss China's support of Russia's war in Ukraine. The US is threatening banking sanctions against Chinese industries that facilitate the sales of these dual-use items to Russia and the EU is threatening the same, but also stating that China's support of Russia makes it a threat to European security. The trade increases between Russia and China since 2022 support the West's accusations. China before the war accounted for less than 30% of Russia's imported goods to now being 88% in 2023. This includes a 120% increase in 2022 and a 170% increase in 2023 of machine tools that can be used for increasing factory output, including war production. However, the threats from Europe and the US against banks facilitating trade with the Russia seems to have an effect as transactions have fallen sharply in March and April as Chinese banks don't want to risk sanctions by the West. Why this matters is unlike other Russian allies such as Iran and North Korea, China's economy, as an exporter of manufactured goods, relies on access to the open market to maintain its economy. It cannot risk having its access to the markets of the West severely restricted. 
It is suspected that this is the reason for the 43rd meeting between the two leaders. Russia needs the Chinese to continue their trade with Russia so it can continue to prosecute the war in Ukraine. Russia also wants to have access to Chinese financial markets, using Chinese currency to access world markets to re-establish trade. This is risky to China if the West discovers this happening and sanction Chinese financial institutions. Russia also needs concrete commitments from China for energy purchases as it is building pipelines to facilitate long-term energy transfers. China is providing critical support to Russia, and Russia needs that help to continue and even increase so that it can continue to grow its economy and industrial capacity to continue to fight the war in Ukraine. China needs Russia to form a diplomatic and economic bloc to assist it in counterbalancing the US on the world stage. They have a need for each other, but both still need access to the outside world. China needs to maintain an open market to the world to sell its goods, and Russia needs to sell its oil and gas to the world to fund its war. The world needs Russian oil to stay in the world market to keep the energy supply and price to be stable and Chinese manufactured goods until they can decouple their economies from China. This week, the US announced a series of stiff tariffs against China on its EV cars and green energy products such as solar panels. This is while the US is pressuring China to stop its dual-use trade with Russia but notice that the US did not ask China or India to stop buying Russian oil and gas. The US is asking China to give up its increased, though deceptive, trade practices with Russia and also issue tariffs against its manufactured goods. The US tariffs are not meant to be political but economic as a protectionist move to protect US manufacturing from relatively cheaper Chinese goods. Despite this intent, in the context of the Ukraine war, these tariffs are political as they are in conjunction with U.S. threats of sanctioning Chinese banks. Two separate U.S. policies are going after the financial and manufacturing base in China. These actions just so happen to coincide with China and Russia, having a surprise summit this week to discuss economic and trade issues. The U.S. during the Cold War was able to leverage the distrust between the Soviet Union and China to keep them from reforming a communist bloc that existed when Mao Zedong first came to power and formed an alliance with Joseph Stalin's Soviet Union. Now the US, and to a lesser extent, EU policy is driving both Russia and China closer together to strengthen their diplomatic and economic ties with each other. International affairs between political rivals are difficult during peacetime, but in the time of conflict, maintaining international affairs becomes extraordinarily complex and increases the likelihood of a consequential mistake in policy judgment. The US tough approach with China by using decoupling and tariffs could be considered a legitimate policy to eliminate supply chain dependency and incentivize fair trade. Without the sanctions due to the Ukraine war, this could incentivize negotiations between the US, EU and China to reach an agreement. The ongoing Ukraine war has created an imbalance as the West threatens China to support the sanctions against Russia or face its own sanctions while pressing it on separate trade issues. China is not going to become a liberal democracy as it sees the West as antithetical to its view of the world, so threatening it on two fronts will only push it closer to the one partner, Russia, that agrees of its view of the world order, and Russia is the one power that can help it to counter the US on the world stage. China will not simply abandon its relationship with Russia to satisfy a hostile West, though it needs access to its markets because Russia cannot replace trade with the West. The China-Russia summit will be a meeting to strengthen their alliance while also seeking to avoid alienating the West by using more obfuscation over sanctions since China still needs the West to support economic growth and Russia to create a diplomatic counter to the West. China finds alliances useful when it suits its purposes and is another example of the disastrous policy that led to and incentives the continuation of the Ukraine war.